if he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. New York Attorney General Letitia James is telling Donald Trump in that clip, in no uncertain terms, pay up. The ex-president is on the hook for roughly half a billion dollars after his civil fraud case, and every day the fine goes unpaid. Trump owes an extra $87,500 in interest. Oof. And in addition to the fraud judgment, Trump still owes writer E. Jean Carroll $83 million for defamation. I asked one of Carroll's attorneys what happens if he doesn't pay. We can start taking steps to actually enforce the judgment, um, which means going to the court and asking for an order for us to start attaching assets. I mean, this money has to be paid. Uh, and if he if he's not able to secure a bond or pay the full amount to the court, then we will then we will take steps to make sure that the judgment's enforced. As A.G. James told ABC News, quote, if you want something done, give it to a woman. And it seems like these women are going to do what is necessary to get Trump to pay for what he owes. Neil Katyal served as acting solicitor general of the United States, where he argued dozens of cases before the Supreme Court. And he joins me now. So, Neil, I know timeline-wise, Trump has a couple more weeks, not much time. We're talking about early March here to kind of pay what he owes in these cases. What would the process of seizing Trump's assets, if it came to that, of course, actually look like? When would it happen? How would A.G. James or Robbie Caput or Sean Crowley or whomever, how would they go about doing it? Yeah, so first of all, Donald Trump is facing, I think, about 550 or so million dollars when you add up the two judgments in the interest rate uh, that has to be paid at 9%. Um, so assuming he doesn't pay that within the next couple of weeks, either to the court or through a bond, and we can talk about what those are in a minute, but assuming he doesn't do that, then Attorney General James can go into court, as she says. She says she'll seek judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. So that would be basically saying to the judge, look, he owes $450 million as a result of this judgment. He's not paying it. So we're going to force you, the court, to seize these properties, sell them, and give us the money. Um, and similarly, the process for Jean Carroll would work in a very similar way. I think the complication is that I think it's very unlikely that we'll get to that stage mm. because one way or another, Trump will get the money uh, to be put up to be put up um, to avoid that forced seizure of his assets. So that's interesting, because the question is really then, how will he get the money? Like, how will Trump get this money? Because, of course, um, the ruling says he cannot seek loans from New York lenders. He can, of course, go out of state. Um, is, is that how, what he has to do in order to, in order to pay this up? So he's got basically two options. One is he pays the judgment himself, either through his cash assets mm -hmm. um, or through assets that he can sell and liquidate. But that's about, you know, whatever, 530 to $550 million. That's going to be very tough for him to do in a short period of time. So in reality, he's going to have to get what's called a bond. And a bond means that he's not going to have to pay the full amount right away. Often bonds are only, you put 10% down, and then the 90% is lended to you, and you've got to have collateral. Now, 10% is the rate for someone with a normal track record of paying their debts and you know being a responsible business person. Obviously, the allegations here make that pretty tough. Um, and in addition to the 10%, you also have to pay bond fees, which are here are going to be about $20 million to whoever writes a bond. And you point out, Jen, you're absolutely right. The judge in this case banned Donald Trump from making dealings with any financial institution licensed in New York, which means any bank and the like. So thousands of institutions are out for him to get this bond. Um, but there may be other people out there, you know, maybe a hedge fund or maybe mm. an individual, maybe, you know, Elon Musk or Putin or someone else <laughs> who's willing to loan him the money, because even though Trump's not good for it, um, he's known as a grifter. And if you lend him money, you probably get some benefit in return. Can he get the money from, I mean, I know you sort of, that was a joke, although no reason, it's crazy things are happening this week, so we should explore all options. I mean, could Putin, could, could an authoritarian leader or government get, lend him this money? Is that legal? Yeah, well, I, I, assume, I assume Putin couldn't because it'd be a Russian sanction issue. Well, of course, not Putin, but the, the Saudis, but, others? But, 
Right. So someone else could. There's no legal prohibition against someone else paying the judgment of someone else. Um, and particularly when you have a grifter like Trump, that may be an attractive investment for someone, even though they know Trump's not good for the 550 million. Um, he may be good in other ways. Um, and so this is something really to watch. And it is really striking that we've had, you know, weak as salacious testimony in Georgia about Fawny Willis and possibly getting, you know, vacation trips for, you know, 50 yeah. bucks or $1,000 or whatever. And yet we're talking about this massive amount of debt that, that this presidential candidate may owe. That seems a far more serious concern to be worrying about. I mean, the plot of Homeland is thickening. Um, you know, Trump, no surprise to you or me or probably anyone watching that he weighed in on this last night. He just happened, of course, this is the part that's a little questionable, to have a copy of the Eighth Amendment on him. So take a listen. Would you give up one of your properties to, well, to gonna, settle this? Up, look, we have, you know, I wrote this up because it was so, it was so great. I just looked at it. People call up. All of your friends, the lawyers call up. They say it's the most egregious punishment anybody's ever seen. Tim Scott knows that. He sees it. The Eighth Amendment. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. That's the Eighth Amendment. So I think it's fair to say he's not exactly a constitutional expert. You are in the minute we have left here, Neil. Is this excessive? Uh, no, not even close. Uh, so, I mean, Donald Trump, I think, knows a lot about cruel and unusual punishment, having doled it out when he was president. But on this one, he's absolutely wrong. Um, this is a fine well within New York's tradition, the federal tradition and the state tradition. Um, you know, the reason why it's so large is because he committed such a large crime. And, you know, that will be the answer in court. And I don't expect Trump to win. Turns out when you do a crime, you're going to be there are going to be consequences when our legal system is working well. And it did in this case. Neil Katziel, thank you, as always, for explaining all the things to all of us.